Hey there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's card making video, I'm going to be playing with some sequin mixes from the Heffy Doodle Shop. They have these new mixes that came out that have, they're like variety packs with different colors in them. They're so gorgeous and I love shaker cards. So I thought I would use these to create some shaker cards today. These are the Truly Outrageous Sparkle Pack. We have Royal Mist, that purple is so gorgeous. Unicorn Dreams, which is the purple Perfect name for that collection. Then we have Cove C. I can just see a mermaid with these. Oh, so pretty. And then we have our Pixie Hollow. I love that name. And I'm going to use that one today for sure. Then we have our Pink Fizz. So these are just six of the new ones. They also have a fall collection. So I'll link these for you below. You can check them out for yourself. All right, let's jump into card number one. I am going to start with my background. I am making a pink background with this wonderful window masquerade stencil. It has markings on the back so you can easily line up your paper. My cardstock here is A2 size. I'm using saltwater taffy and I'm using a finger style blending brush to add ink to each of the squares individually so I can keep the outside darker and the inside a little bit lighter, just for a fun effect. And I think that this stencil is very versatile, like I'm using it with koala bears. It's just kind of a fun stencil set. It also has a mask with it, so if you wanted to mask off the squares and do something else with it, you could do that. You could use the mask by itself and have like a white square with ink blending around it. Yeah, pretty cool. So let's take a look at my background, all finished. It is so pretty and I think it's going to be great for this card, which might seem a little unusual to put with the koalas, but for a shaker card, we need a frame. So I pulled out the Imperial Stitched Rectangle Die Set. It has stitching on the outside and the inside of the rectangle. So when I put two together, I've got stitching on both sides and my leftover pieces have stitching as well. So you could totally use those. But I wanted to add a little bit more interest to this because it's going to be full size on my card. It's gonna completely take up my A2 size card. It's not gonna have a border around it like if I had a white card base made my top layer a little bit smaller. So when I add the shading to the outside, it's gonna give me that little bit of depth, that little dark edge that's gonna bring your eye into the center. And I used Lucky Clover for that. Now I'm using Rustic Wilderness to splatter a little splatter <laughs> onto this frame, yeah splatter some splatter. That's what we're doing. I have a scraggly paintbrush here and I'm just dragging that on the edge of this window sheet, which you can tell is very well used. I splatter a lot. I splatter, I make shaker cards. It's like two of my favorite things combined. So I'm gonna set that frame aside and bring out this heat resistant acetate. So this is going to allow me to stamp my sentiment onto my window sheet and emboss it, which I just love. So I'm gonna do that on all my cards today. And I'm using this stamp set as the only set for all three cards. It's called Koality Hugs. It's a koala bear set. I think it's very, very cute. So I just decided I'm kind of going to stick with some of the same things. When I'm making multiple cards, doing a lot of things in repetition make it a little bit more easy. And then it also allows for other ideas to come in. I'll talk about that more as we go. So here I'm stamping my sentiment that is clear on a window sheet. So I was kind of tilting it in the light there so I could make sure it stamped out really well. I did use an anti-static powder bag on this acetate before I embossed it. Here it looks like there's a ton of powder on here, but it doesn't really show up in the card itself. So I'm stamping out some images here. I wasn't really sure like how many cards I was going to make at this point. So I just stamped out a few images and I'm going to show you how I color out my koala bears. These two bears I am starting with N4 as my darkest color. Now some of the other bears I play with some darker colors but these ones I kind of wanted to be really light. So then I'll bring in N3 for my mid-tone and just blend out that darkest color. Now the cardstock that I'm using is something to mention because it's alcohol friendly cardstock from Heffy Doodle. It's very lightweight and that 
seems like sometimes can be considered a bad thing, but when you're Copic coloring, having a lighter paper means the ink is going to blend so much easier. So this paper is designed to help your alcohol markers blend, and it really does. It is great paper. I really enjoy coloring on it. I find it very easy to do. So now I'm adding a little pink to their ears, and then I'm going to color out the branch here. So I just used one brown and one green to color this. I am concentrating my ink on either end of the branch and not putting so much coverage in the center. So that's going to give me a little bit of darker um, shadows on there. Same with the leaves. I'm putting the concentrated or the most ink at the base of the leaf, coloring it out with just one layer. And then that does give me a little bit of dimension and I like that. Okay, so now it's time for white highlights with a gel pen. I tend to do this all the time on my stamped and colored images. I don't know about you, but it just really adds a little something, even if it's just subtle on there. It really adds that like shine of light hitting an object. Okay, I had to show you this because the dye that cuts out this koala bear right here, it will cut around its hands and I can tuck the little present in. Ah, I love that. Okay, so here I'm just using the Heffy Doodle mini die cut machine. I don't know if you've seen this before, but it's like adorable. <laughs> and I love just having it on my desk. I can pull it out even like when my desk is so messy. <laughs> like when you're card making, doesn't like your supplies, they just kind of start creeping in on you and like taking over. Yeah, that's why I like the little die machine. I can bring it over really easily and get to die cutting. Okay, so here I'm gluing down all my things on my window sheet, just kind of um, arranging them before I commit with glue, making sure I have a room with my frame. I have um, like in relation to the square. So I just like to do that, like lay things out and kind of get a an idea where they're going before I glue them in place. Speaking of gluing in place, I'm now gluing my window sheet to the back of my frame. I set some heavy blocks on that to dry and while that's drying, I'm using my foam tape here to create a reservoir for my shaker bits. Now, the shaker elements I showed you at the beginning, but I wanna talk about the foam tape. This foam tape is also from Heffy Doodle. It is extra thick, so it's it's fat. So if you have thick shaker elements, it's gonna uh, work for that. If you do light up cards, it's gonna work for that. Plus, this foam tape, y'all, it is not sticky on the edges. I don't have to use my anti-static powder with it. My sequins are not going to stick to the edge of it. That is my favorite thing about it. I am not kidding, it is amazing. It, these, these are the little things that bring me joy. <laughs> All right, I'm gluing that down to my A2 size card. Then I brought out a leaf die and die cut these leaves, oh, I, I showed you that a second ago, from some green glitter paper. And I think that just that lighter green on the darker green, it just really helps draw your eye into the center and it makes them feel more like they're in a really like leafy tree or something. And I had to add some hearts for one more little embellishment cut from some pink glitter paper. I'm gonna put those right above my little cut cuddling um, koala bears, and I already know who I'm sending this card to, um, somebody that just needs a little cheer, right? You could send a card like this. It doesn't have to be for a birthday or a thank you, just, you know, sometimes you just want to send somebody a card. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. All right, let's move on to card number two, because there's more sequins to play with, and I am going to do something a little bit purple this time. So I have my vertical vines stencil. This stencil is like really loose, like it's it has so much open space that are really thin. So I thought this would be really good to just lay down, not rub it with a blending brush, but spritz it with some spray stains. So I have the Distress Oxide Spray, I have my Mica Spray, this is the Halloween release from last year, and I just sprayed both of those on there so I'd have a little bit of shine, and then I'm going to set that aside to dry, take the stencil that has wet spray on it, press that down onto another sheet of paper. So it's like a two for one deal, right? You spray once, you get two backgrounds. I love that. So I am gonna use both of these backgrounds in today's cards. And there they are. 
So cool, right? Okay, for this card, I'm using the Pixie Hollow Sequin Mix. It's got the purples and the greens. And by the way, there's different size sequins in there. They're like tiny ones and medium and big. Some of them are clear. Some of them are translucent. Some of them are shiny. It's it, They're just like really cool mixes. All right, so I added a little Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide ink around the edge. I thought it'd be just fun to kind of darken up the edge a little bit and ah, it was fun. I liked it. All right, for this frame, I'm using a really light lavender cardstock. And remember I had already colored this present, but I colored it pink because I'm doing a purple card. I went over it with my V01 marker and then with my V12 marker to make a purple present, left the bow green, that's gonna match. And now it's ready for this card. And I also decided I needed a party hat for this one. So I stamped that out. It's from the same stamp set and I'm using the same two purple markers, V1 and V12 for this hat. Just keeping it really simple with different two different shades of purple. Kind of lavender really. Yeah. Okay, for the edge of this frame, I've got my dusty concord. Look how pretty these colors look together. I love um, just playing with like papers that I have in my stash and seeing how they look with other things I already have. And this is one of those things that made me so happy. So, so pretty. So I use the same Dusty Concord ink to splatter on this one. And this one, I love how it turned out because I got some like bigger splotches of ink. And yeah, I just love the splatter look. So that made me very happy. Okay. For the glitter leaves on this card, I'm using some fun foam that has glitter on it. This is from Spellbinders. It's one of their new products that's made for die cutting. The glitter does not rub off. It's like super duper cool. And I've been using it a little bit more lately and having so much fun with it. So again, it's time to arrange all my things. I've got my window sheet um, magneted to my Misty with my background so I can really lay things out, see how it's gonna look and decide where to stamp my sentiment for card number two. Um, again, with clear ink and then white embossing powder. And this is that clear acetate window that's heat resistant. So you can totally emboss on it. Now you don't really wanna like hold your heat gun in one spot for five minutes, like no. <laughs> but if you're just gonna like emboss your sentiment, it works really quite well. So this one says, wishing you a quality birthday. And I'm bringing in those Pixie Hollow sequins. Oh, they're so good, they're so good. You can see the purples and the blue. It's kind of like a bluish, lavender on some of them. Some of them it's just straight purple. So it's a gorgeous mix. I mean, so pretty. Okay, so that is stuck together now. Our shaker is ready to go. And I'm sticking down my little koala, the sleeping one with the party hat. Isn't that cute? And then here you can see I tucked the present in his paw. So, so cool that you have the option on that with this die set. And then I'm sticking down those leaves that are cut with the foam with some glue dots. And so that will stick down really well. And then this is getting attached to my A2 size card. Um, all, both of my cards, all three of my cards are top folding. Now for the hearts on this one, I use that green glitter paper from card number one that I die cut the leaves from, but this time cut the little hearts. So a little bit more green on here for added interest. And oh, I love this one. I would love to know when I'm all done, you've watched the whole video, let me know which of these three cards is your favorite. So for card number three, I'm using Unicorn Dreams and that stenciled piece that I took the print right off the stencil. Yeah, okay, for the frame here, I found this cardstock in my stash of Heffy Doodle cardstock and this blue has just kind of kind of a periwinkle color to it. And I did dust up the edge with some Distress Oxide ink and for the splatter, I'm using white paint. This is the um, Picket Fence white paint. I watered it down a little bit. I just wanted to brighten up the frame a little bit for the splatter. So that's why I went lighter instead of darker. And here you can see that splatter. It is, ooh, so pretty. I love white splatter. It's like my favorite one to do. So I have tried a lot of variety of different white paints for splattering. And now I had to stamp some more images for card number three. So I stamped the little cell phone and all the koala bears I hadn't yet used. And I colored them and cut them out. I'm doing the same thing with my sentiment stamping it on that clear window sheet and embossing it with white. This one says, Cole. 
I can't say it. Call me. Please call call me sometime. Yeah. Uh, that one's hard for me. I don't know why. I'm Same thing, gluing it down to my frame. You can see the items of repetition. But then I do change things up a little bit. Change the colors a little bit. Change um, my, what I'm die cutting my leaves from a little bit. My koalas, my sayings, how I arrange it. But I don't have to think too much about you know, what stamp set should I use? What background should I use? Should I make a different frame? Like there's a lot of the things repeated. And so it leaves room for creativity in other areas. For this little koala, I decided he should hang from the tree and instead of kind of climb it. So I cut around his paws so he could hang there. And then I helped attach it to the tree by putting some double stick tape on the back and that's kind of holding him in place. And then I can just add some glue and tuck that in. I like how on all my cards, the little branch is tucked there under the frame. Then the baby koala is holding the cell phone and then the other little koala in the bottom right corner. Now for my leaves, I decided to use the wildflower flower paper pad from Heffy Doodle and this polka dot pattern. I wanted to just brighten it up a little bit. So there's my leaves and I also feel like it kind of gives it a little bit of a young flair and I already knew I want to send this card to my niece. I don't know if she's watching, but maybe she'll get this in the mail as a surprise. <laughs> Sometimes she calls me on her kids Facebook messenger and I love it so much So I thought this would be a fun card just to send her a little fun note All right now there are matching enamel dots with that wildflower paper pack So I'm going to take some kind of coordinating colors from it and add them to the center of these little flowers Which by the way are from the leafy laurel die set. It has like a really cool um, wreath you can make and instead of just doing the heart on this card, there is the word high in this die set. The, if this is the mini male die set. I use that little heart all the time for accents. And so this time I thought, well, let's put high, call me sometime. And it would make just like another layer to my sentiment there. So fun. All right, again, adding this to my A2 top folding card. So it's a piece of cardstock that is 11 inches by four and a fourth, scored at five and a half. That's how you make a top folding A2 size card base. So there is card number three. I am I already have two of these ready to be mailed out. So I'm pretty excited about that to get some cards in the mail. Sometimes I make cards and they don't get sent out. <laughs> as often. So I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on getting them sent out. So I had a lot of fun with these beautiful sequin mixes. Like I said, there's another six that just came out for fall. So I'll link all of them for you below and you can check them out yourself and um, as well as the other products that I use today. I thank you so much for stopping by and letting me share my creations with you. You know, I love shaker cards and I make them all the time. So um, I hope that you are inspired to make a shaker card as well. I will see you guys all again very soon on the next video. Happy stamping! Bye!